Hi guys, I'm Joel Hager with Dome Gaia, and I recently had the pleasure to tour an Air Creek construction site in Southern Colorado, where they're using the Dome Gaia Dragon XL foam generator, along with a specialized pumping system. Bruce and Susan are building this whole house on their own, and I got to talk to them about why exactly they chose to use Aircrete as the primary material and exactly how they're doing it. Okay, now let's get to the interview and see their construction site. I'm Bruce. I'm Susan. And we're building uh, an Aircrete house. And ours is a little different because we're going to do more of a conventional uh, straight up and down walls and um, uh, not doing a dome. And really kind of got this direction. We started building um, or started designing at the time when lumber prices were really getting out of control and really figured out economically we could build what we were wanting with Hair Creek for less money. We're building about a 1400 square foot house and a 900 square foot garage and a pretty conventional house otherwise when it's all done, um, you know, I suspect most people would look at it and assume that it's adobe or hay bale or something like that, that they won't mm -hmm. immediately recognize it as aircrete. So it's going to be pretty conventional when it's all said and done. The basis of the house is we're doing a full 12 inch thick wall um, and we're using just the straight uh, uh, Dragon XL uh, in order to, for creating our foam. And the big difference for us is just the quantity that we're doing in a day. Um, I mix up 100 gallons of, of uh, foam concentrate at the beginning of every day. And that gives us, you know, about 18 or 19 batches. And we'll, you know, on a good day, we'll run through that entire, ba that entire uh, uh, 100 gallons of material. So we needed some way of of Mass making a whole lot more aircrete and transporting that aircrete uh, than we could possibly do with barrels and buckets. And so we launched into designing um, some sort of apparatus that would, would allow us to just be a lot more productive with our time. Our process starts with mixing our slurry and I have a standalone mixer that I've made that allows us to get a really um, creamy, consistent slurry that we found is really important to our, our end product. So I start there, uh, just a normal one bag of cement and to in our case, I'm only doing five gallons of water instead of six. Um, and then uh, while that is being mixed, um, Susan is uh, at the mixing drum and she is adding foam to the mixing drum and then once the slurry is mixed and ready to go in, um, I go ahead and transfer that into buckets, pour it into the mixing drum um, and then mix all of that and then top off with foam with anything that's left in there. Once once we're, we've mixed that for maybe five minutes, uh, we go ahead and transfer out of the mixing drum into the pressure vessel um, and then uh, seal up the pressure vessel and then uh, with compressed air pump out of the pressure vessel through a hose into our forms that are, and then Susan runs the, the other end of the hose and then we, uh, once once it's empty, we uh, shut off shut off pressure and start the process over again. And it's we're doing about somewhere in the 15 minutes per batch range. Last year, before we designed this more efficient system, we hauled a lot of buckets. I think I lost 10 pounds last summer. Yeah. And uh, 
we found that we could only do like nine batches max. And so by Bruce designing this more efficient system, it's just really encouraging that we can, we can do double the amount in a day's work without killing ourselves. So yeah, it's, it's doing fun. twice as much work with half half the effort. Yeah, yeah. it's um, it's a lot of fun actually, and, and I've never built a house, so I'm just learning a lot and doing it an alternative way is exciting, and um, we just enjoy it. The idea of using this aircrete in the way that we're doing it allows us really we've got. You know, the inside surface is done. Once we've poured, the outside surface is done. Our insulation is in place that once the wall is constructed, you know, we're not having to go back through it a whole bunch of times, um, not having to handle, you know, all of these various materials. Um, you know, we're in a fairly remote location. We're over an hour from a Home Depot and that it's, well, yeah, excuse me, <laughs> closer to two hours from Home Depot. And that, you know, not having to run back and forth to the hardware store for all kinds of stuff where, you know, we need Portland cement and, you know, on our form material. And the form material will get used up when we sheet the roof. So, you know, it's it, very, very little waste in this project. When we, you know, we'll do maybe, you know, 15 or 20 pours, you know, bat, full batches of aircrete, and at the end, you know, uh, we throw out maybe a five-gallon bucket of aircrete when we're cleaning up at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's al almost zero waste. Our experience with aircrete has been really, um, really good. We haven't had any issues with collapsing. Um, you know, we use the Dragon XL. Um, we get, monitor our, our foam weight you know every few batches and Susan has gotten to the point where she just can tell by how it's coming out where if it's right or if it needs adjustment and so you know that we just you know we just fly through this stuff you know it's just really quick now in order to kind of conserve materials since and since we can only pour about a foot deep um, at a time. Uh, we've got a, f a method that's called slip forming and we've got a two foot high form, plywood form, and then we do two pours inside of that and then um, we've got uh, poles rigged up and we're actually able to take that, um, uh, take that form and just lift it a couple of feet and then pour full, slip it up another couple of feet pour it full and uh, uh, the wall heights in this house range from about seven and a half feet to 14 feet mm -hmm. and so you know seven eight slips of the form up and we're at the top of the wall we're just going to do cement stucco uh, and cement plasters inside and outside um, not really planning on getting um, uh, too crazy with that, gonna keep that part pretty simple, I think. You know, there's all sorts of information out there about what the R value is. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that we're somewhere in the R2 per inch, maybe inch, you know, I think it could be anywhere between one and three quarter to two and a quarter, realistically. Um, and so we're at, you know, a full 12 inches thick. So I'm expecting performance somewhere in the R, you know, 25 range, which is almost double what a two by six wall, you know, when you look, you know, it's R21 insulation in there, but you got to look at your entire assembly. You know, your studs don't give you that kind of insulation. So many times from what I understand, um, an R21 wall will perform at R13, whereas this will perform in the 20s, you know, all through the wall. So I think I think our performance will be double what a conventional house is. Wow, what a cool project. I really hope this inspires people to do innovative building like this. I also hope to go back and share some of the lessons learned and exactly how they're doing it. Okay, so now for some of my own thoughts. 
I'm curious to see how this house feels on the inside when it's done. In my experience, houses that are built with really thick walls like this that have superior insulation value just feel amazing. They're super, super quiet. They stay at very constant temperature regardless of the weather outside and they just feel very, very homey. That's one big thing that I'm excited to see with this house. Another really significant benefit that I see of this system is you know, although they basically had to invest in developing some of the systems they're using, like the slip forms and the pumping system, when you factor in just the, the really significant R value of the building and how inexpensive it is, and the fact that they can do it themselves, I, I think this is really important. The other thing is just they're handling very few materials overall. When you build in a conventional method with say like a two by six wall, there's a lot of layers to it and a lot of different materials and you need to have a lot of special knowledge and skills to work with each one of those. And for a lot of people that's really overwhelming. The beauty of building an air creep wall like this is that the number of materials that you're using is very minimal. Especially if you're building in a more remote location where it can be hard to get materials. What Bruce and Susan are doing is really accessible to a lot of people, so I'm super excited to be sharing this. If you're interested in learning more about the advantages of building with Aircrete and exactly how to do it, then subscribe to this channel. Also, head over to domegaia.com and sign up for our newsletter to get announcements and updates.